This is the true story, true story of one DJ chosen by his fans to travel the world and make music. This is laid back, Luke. Find out what happens when DJs stop being DJs and start getting real. The Real World DJ Edition. Hey, what's up? Welcome to vlog number 23. Welcome in my humble studio. Actually, this is very much luxury for me because whenever I'm on the road, I really only produce on my laptop. And most of the time, because I'm only four days at home per month, I miss my studio. So I'm actually happy I don't have a super fancy spaceship type of studio. And it's a bit of a different vlog this time. So if you're not that much of a producer, feel free to skip this vlog because we're gonna go in deep. It was vlog number nine where I did the last tutorial. I spoke about bass layering, EQ and kick and bass, and I saw in the comments that you had a lot of questions about uh, how to properly use a reverb and how to do mastering. I don't use uh, any fancy reverbs or anything. A lot of the reverb I do is with the Ableton stock reverb, which is fine. If it works, it works, and that's something you really need to uh, keep in mind. So this is the bass line. The bass line is fine, but I'll just add some reverb to show you how I would do it. What I basically do is turn up the dry and wet, make it very obvious the effect is in there. And then just twist the knobs until you hear something you think is good. So I would always try and recommend a, a reverb time, a long reverb time, which makes it very epic. So five seconds is usually good. Cut out the low frequencies in there. And for the diffuse, for the reflect, just tweak the knobs and see what effect it has. Whenever you hear something that you enjoy, that you like, just bring the dry wet back to a subtle effect. And then it's there. You don't need spacey convulsion, difficult uh, stereo panning, reverb stuff going on. So this is a cool little tip about uh, the Ableton reverb settings, making the reverb super short, which gives a very exciting spatial effect. So you just tweak the size of it. This is without, super dry. And this is with, and you might want to check that out. On vocals, it's awesome as well. And I would suggest doing one short one and one long one, just to, to space it out, beef it up a little bit. Now you can do two things. You can put the reverb on the group, or you can put the reverb on a bus, aka the send return. The advantage of putting a reverb on the bus is that you can EQ it and sidechain it if you want. So I'm just uh, gonna put this reverb on the return. I'll turn up the signal over here. Let's have it uh, somewhere like this. Turn it on. Make it very apparent. Now what I want to have it really out there. And now you can add a volume on the reverb, but maybe you know uh, less width on the stereo, which you can, which you'd be able to do here. Or you can EQ the reverb, like I said. Uh, try not to have much low end on it. The cool thing is you can also add sidechain compression now on this without it affecting your melody. It'll only affect the reverb. So I'll just have the kick signal come into this and I'll solo it. Let's see if I can have a signal. And now we can sidechain the reverb. Now we can make it more subtle, well, just like this. So 
So depending on what you want, you can do everything on the single reverb if you put it on a bus channel, which might be very interesting. The basic principles for this I took from Mike Marsh, who's a famous masterer from the Exchange in London, and what I saw him do was reference his track with existing tracks, and this really hit home to me. So what it is you know what tracks sound great in a club or in a car or in the supermarket or ev anywhere else, then that's how your track should sound as well. So very simple. I actually always put about three, sometimes more, reference tracks uh, in my project. What I make sure is that my master chain is clean, so this is only a T-Rex uh, Spectrum Analyzer. And then I'll add another channel up top, which I'll call the pre-master, which hold all of my master chain. Because this is a clean channel, this means I can have the reference out onto the master and it has no influence from my master chain. And then I can just compare. So this is uh, Cashmere because his productions sound awesome. <laughs> And then I just go back and forth. This too, this is uh, Too Loud. Too Loud is an awesome producer as well. And I did the mastering on sax and it sounds awesome. When you go back and forth, you can hear the difference. Here's a disclaimer. My master chain consists of a combination of what I learned from Swedish House Mafia and the master chain I got from Loopers and Dairo. So, I cannot reveal their secrets, that's golden. Uh, this end compressor is mine, I did the settings on that, uh, just to make sure I could squeeze in the, the RMS uh, and the peak together a little bit more. Isotopy ozone for harmonic exciting only, just to make some crispy hi-hats. And then all the way on the end is the Fab Filter Pro L. So, what I usually advise is just have a EQ, compressor, and a limiter on your master chain. And I produce always with my master chain on from scratch because this means when you're finished with the track, you don't really need to do mastering anymore if you've done all the volumes right. So that's the key. That's why I make music very quickly because of that rule I break. Going back and forth. I can hear my track maybe needs a little bit mid and a little bit of tight low so let's uh, let's hear it. look up the peak uh, over exaggerate it and then pull it back a little bit and the frequency should be there so a little bit less a little bit tighter on the kick drum So it's much better now, and now it can actually compete with all these awesome tracks. And now you can hear actually a little bit of phase going on in the bass line, which sounds awesome in stereo, but in mono it's tricky. So this means uh, on club systems, which are uh, usually mono, and I could have trouble with this bass line. Luckily I tested it out and it's fine, but that's why you need to keep your signal in mono when mastering or even when you produce and start producing tracks all the way up to the end I'll put it in stereo basically everything that's mid should be wide uh, sub, mono, high ends, moderate stereo so you know the spectrum analyzer when you see your signal correlation uh, in here this is great. If it goes into minus one, this means you'll have phase problems. And phase problems can even result in uh, you totally missing out your bass line or your kick drum on a mono system. So keep, uh, keep an eye on that. The perceived loudness in the RMS is something that a lot of producers love who are in the loudness war. Okay, so look, I can easily make the perceived loudness in RMS flow more together. I could just like cut off the bass, put a ton of mid in, look what we have here, almost the same perceived loudness as the RMS, but we are missing sub-frequencies now. I rolled off my sub 
up to 147 hertz, which is crazy because uh, there will be no uh, oomph in the club for this one. Instead of always looking at the meters, try and use your ears as well. So same goes with my master chain. This volume input over here, and I could easily crank it up so it won't have any dynamics and it will be distorting, so listen. But you don't want that. You still want a little bit of dynamics in there. And you can just do it by ear so that it still sounds like, you know, okay, so there's still a thump going on, everything sounds clean. So I'm all for the loudness war. I have a ton of compressors and EQs on my master chain, but it still should sound dynamic and it still should have all the frequencies in there. About all the EQs, my theory behind the EQs is that if I would add another EQ over here, this would mean I would start with a clean palette. So these three, these are working, this is great, but when I add this one, I'll just handle it the way I hear the signal now. So if, for instance, oh, I need less high end or something, I could add a new EQ and say like, oh, I don't know about the the high end, maybe I should have like a little peak on the on the high ads. And I could just add that. You can add as many EQs as you want, it doesn't matter. So very easy and simple. Make music in mono, master in mono. Compare your tracks with professional tracks because if your track sounds exactly the same as a professional track, you know it will sound great anywhere and everywhere. And number three, try and keep the dynamics in there. So try and prevent distortion, try and prevent brick wall type of digital mud with just some simple volume changes and then it's there. If you have any additional questions, put them in the comments or hit me up on Twitter as well. It's at LateBackLuke and I'll always try and answer because I love answering producer questions. Next vlog, I'll be taking you on tour with me again. We'll go to the Mix Mash label party in Germany and we'll fly to Italy as well. This is the true story and the real life right here.